everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and pears are back. Today we're going to be doing an abstract still life painting of a pear. Ha <laughs> ha! Some of you went, ah, pears! It's going to be so much fun. So we are going to be getting back into the pears. We're going to be painting loosely. We're going to be using marks and texture to create dimension in the painting. Uh, all of this stuff is going to be broken down step by step to help me do that is my husband, John. Hello! This is part of a 30 day painting challenge called Acrylic April where we meet every day and we do a painting together every day. This is our fifth year doing yeah. it. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that makes this super fun. So I highly encourage you, maybe you just found this one pair and you thought, I'm gonna do this pair, but I'm gonna say, hey, come do all 30 with us because that's fun too. To find out more about that, check the description below. In the description, I hide things like the materials and the brushes and links to the website. They're secretly down there. You open the more button and it takes you to the artsherpa.com and the artsherpa.com has more resources for you from uh, the traceable if you don't want to draw the pair that's just free to download to the school to the store to the books so everything is over there the acrylic april group is over on facebook nothing to do but for you guys to get your paint your brushes and come back and meet me at this easel right now because together we're going to paint this in today's class, we are going to be starting with an 8x8 surface. This is really nice and easy to paint on. You can size it up and down very easily. We use them all acrylic April month. I have the colors Deoxazine Purple, Cad Red Medium, Cad Yellow Medium, Lemon Yellow Hansa, Mars Black, Thalo Blue, and Titanium White. So it's kind of an unusual palette. Today we're going to get some really interesting color dynamics, color dramas on what is essentially a fairly simple and typical subject. You guys are kind of kind of really like this. Uh, step one, we're going to sketch this in and I'm going to start out with purple. I'm going to load a little purple onto a half inch angle brush. Um, you can, this particular one is a Catalyst Princeton. You could use the other angle that I showed you earlier in the series. Really just an angle is nice to have in your brush bucket and then you just find your favorite and go with it. I like both of those so. You can't get a wrong choice there. And I'm going to sketch in a pair. Now, if you don't like drawing, which I totally understand, um, you can absolutely use the traceable. So I'm coming up here and I'm making a little dip down. This is where our st stem tends to kind of want to go. Make a nice little upward mark for our stem. Curving down. And then it's going to go out. And then curve down again. And then out. This is this is why pairs be super easy. I had them. I don't worry for those of you who remember the big art quest. It's not a pair of pairs. It's just pairs. <laughs> so much less stress. I'm gonna bring a little line down for a leaf. Gives it a little gesture and a little extra interest on the pair. And then we're gonna know that uh, shadow is gonna kind of come out elliptically in this sort of a way. I can even kind of come through the pair to show you what I mean. So we will think about that. But other than that, it's going to be quite strange, unusual, and abstract. I'll erase the little through line with water. You don't have to. It's just a thing that you can do that you don't have to do. Now, this is going to be the focus. We're going to do some fun, interesting other things, but this will be our main focus. We're going to dry this so we can kind of paint in the background. So our background is going to be in blues. Um, I do kind of want to have it be interesting and abstract and dynamic. So I'm not going to be painting like necessarily objects, but implications of objects. I am using a number 18 Raphael Artony brush. It's a hog bristle brush in the shape of a bright. Um, and so any brush that meets that criteria would work here. Um, or just another bright because you really got to pick brushes that are your preference. I'm going to take a little bit of my titanium white and my phthalo blue and I'm going to just start working in a very loosely painted background in blue. Going to have a lot of blue in the background. And we'll definitely play with that. That went a little bit over so I'll kind of wipe that off. Because I actually am going to do kind of a little pop of color here in those yellow. We're going to play with those yellows a bit. So that'll be fun. But we're just getting this first blue on. We will have more blue later. Just got to layer on. Oh, 
Notice that's just rough, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not particularly kind of uh, overwhelmed or worried about it. Just painting it in roughly. And it's okay if the blue gets a little bit on the, uh, the background here. Maybe put a little more thicker blue around. And see, there's just a roughness and an energy and emotion to these brush strokes. We're going to dry everything. Come back, I'm going to show you what you do next. So over here, I can really lighten this because by placing a shadow back this way, I can say this side would have a lighter value. And I'm going to go ahead and add a lot of white to that blue with the same hog brush. I don't want my brush to be wet though because I want to do some kind of like light dry brushing. I'm going to come right over. It's okay if some of the background is showing through. Perhaps a little bit mid-blue here. This limited palette gives us a lot of opportunities to kind of work some interesting stuff out. I'm going to go ahead and add a little white and let's get some of this yellow. I don't want a green. It still needs to be blue. It's just a blue green. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it does. That's those the ranges that we're playing with. Coming back over. And bring that down through diagonally. Now as I come back over here, I'm going to go back into my blue blue. Kind of wipe that out of the brush. Maybe kind of light around there. I know I'm being kind of like thoughtful here. I'm adding a little lighter value. Just wanting to make sure that I've created some interest in this background because it's just really simple right and and when you have a background that's simple you have to kind of think about how that background doesn't become exceedingly boring is what I would think I would say is exceedingly boring we we'll worry about an exceedingly boring background <laughs> okay let's dry everything and I'll show you what you do next so we're going to start putting some of the values in and we're going to play with color a bit. I'm going to take this yellow uh, over here, the cad yellow medium, because it's a warm yellow. It's a little bit biased red. I'm going to add some white to it and I'm going to come here on this pair and kind of paint this coming down, right? It's a light value that I have. I'm using my half inch angle because it's going to help me have a nice kind of open stroke and I'm adding a lot of white right here and maybe again up here. I'm going to rinse that out. And let's get a little bit of our cad red 
And I'm going to come here up along the top of the pear shape. Kind of paint this pure pigment almost, isn't it? Blending it into that right there. Maybe take a little cad yellow and cad red over here. Kind of working those values in. I'm going to come back with some yellow. And wet into wet kind of paint a little of that yellow if you can see what I'm doing. See what I'm doing? That brings sort of a half tone. I'm not blending so much as just using that sort of value transition. To kind of create that from light to dark. Sometimes I'll come in with a little white into my red and it goes a little uh, coral. That's sort of fun. But it also tells a different value story, doesn't it? And I'll bring a little of that coral into that yellow. That creates a little transition. All right, let's call this step. And then we're going to put the shadows in, but we're going to kind of go a different direction on the shadow. So I want to break that up. I'm going to take a little bit of my dioxazine purple and my cad red. And down here at the base, of this pair. Using the cad red and the doxazine purple and that does also and I can come up into this a little bit. Let's come up the side. Maybe even up into here. And see that's just creating sort of a little transition. Let's call that a step because we're just getting in this initial kind of painting or thought in here. It's not our final thought. It's just our initial one. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to use a little bit of my Doxazine Purple Pure because often it reads as black. Bringing that little lips back and coming forward. Just pulling that out and I can get into my white. Kind of add some interest to my shadow, can't I? A little bit of lavender, a little bit of purple there. Just blending this lighter value down there and letting it be. It's not super important where it is yet. You ready for what's next? Let's put up what's another next? step. We another don't have to dry anything. Okay. So we're going to come up here to the top of the pair. And I'm actually going to get a little bit of my black. I love these colors, by the way. And red together. Aren't they a trip? And I'm going to paint the base the beginning of this little stem. Oops. Grab that drop. And I'll kind of think about adding some shadow up there. I might grab a little red and come around that little stem area. And back. 
down the the pair. Just a nice little line back there. I'm going to rinse that out. And I'm going to get a little of my white and my lemon yellow. And come down this crazy little guy with that. That's pretty fun. And I'm going to get just a little bit of my blue over here. And make kind of a crazy green. But it's really a yellow green. All right. That's where we go. So now we want to keep tweaking this, right, to make this a little more dynamic because we need some more contrast and some more interesting stuff going on for sure. I'm going to come through and brighten some of my red. I'm like here with my half inch angle brush and work a few more little pops, pops, pops of red, right? Because that's what we're, we're wanting to get going in here. When I want to kind of diffuse that color, I open up the brush stroke. I'm still using the half inch angle to help that diffuse a bit. I can always go back into full, full brush strokes where I want more of that, like right here. I'm coming across with the CAD red And that full brush stroke across. I'm liking that quite a lot. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of this lightened red right here. Kind of worked in. Doesn't that look nice? And I'm making yeah. large brush strokes. Add a little more yellow as we go. I'm liking that quite a lot. Now I'm going to come through here and I'm going to get a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow into a more distinctive orange. So we're not painting pairs the color pairs are, right? We're painting them the colors like they feel. I'm going to go ahead and take a little of this orange over to my yellow and orange it up a bit more. I will probably come in and lighten that center again, but I, I wanted to bring less of a, a value difference. I'm going to take this yellow through here. And I like that very much. Okay, let's call that a step. Definitely call that a step. And we're going to continue to play maybe a little bit with our background. Um, just, just to kind of work this in. I'm going to take a little bit of my purple and a little bit of my white and make a pretty light value and I'm going to come through here in this lower part and lighten this up into a much lighter purple. Just because I want this to be more interesting and dynamic. Does that make sense? Totally does. So I'm being very loose with the brush. You can see I changed the directionality of the brush. All right, getting some of that there going. And then I can always, you know, really pull in my dark purple. Again, very loose and open which now you can really see it, can't you? 
because of that contrast. Take a little bit of my purple and red. Kind of gives us that nice little shade that we're thinking of that's down here. Softly flourish that up. Okay, let's call that a step and then we're going to come back with the next part. I am going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and my dioxazine purple and I'm going to come here on the outside edge and very, very loosely with this angle brush paint in this darker value. Half blue, half phthalo blue, half dioxazine purple. You can see sort of that open loose brushing. I'll go back into my light purple. Kind of create a blend transition. And you can kind of see how that softens that, pulling that up into that dark area so it's not necessarily a harsh line. I'm going to get this wet. I'm going to come over and get a lot of white into my blue. And maybe even in this case, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow into this white. I'm going to just loosely kind of coming in here paint this very light value. You see that there? Wipe that off. Coming in. I like that very much. So this just really lets us be very expressive and because we gave ourselves good architecture, you know, we're going to we're going to have a good result from it. Getting a nice little blue green going here and you can bring that down as you can see even into the purple can't you and that's lovely. Back up into that yellow white with this very light one and again it's just taking that color there back into the blue adding more white but it keeps it it's not green it's definitely in that blue space. And just pulling those out. I really like how that's like fractal almost. It's a fun way to do it. And also this is, you know, this is going to help you see value and see how um, if you have too hard of a line or too hard of a transition, you know, where you don't want it. Like where you want a hard shadow, that's one thing. But if you didn't want a hard shadow, that's very frustrating and being able to make these little transitional spaces are important. Let's dry everything and I'm going to show you what you do next. So I want to add some interesting pops and value here in here and I'll start out with my yellow, just my pure cad yellow. And I'm going to do that loose open brushing that we've been doing, right? Pop, 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 pop. Pretty exciting right there. It's nice. Less, less open there, like a little more further out. And then maybe again, we can kind of come here and add a bit more of that kind of little heat. Like that a lot. 
Then I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and I'm going to definitely add some white. And we're going to add this bright, bright highlight, that bright reflection. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that seems seems good. I like that. I love the colors and the sort of looseness of it, so to speak. Yeah, it's just, you know, we're just getting into that. We're just, we're just getting weird. Get weird with it, right? I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow right here. Come over what I had before and kind of just, you know, maybe a little bit on that outside. Take a little of this yellow, a smidge of this blue. Again, it's a green, but it's a very... Yellow green, isn't it? It's sort of fun. Kind of interesting in that world. Weird part of me wants to put a little bit of it, like little spots. See that? Isn't that fun? Oh, I like that. I like it too. Super nice. Super duper super nice. I'm going to take a little bit of my red. And gosh, it's just a little bit knocked back with the purple, right? And we're going to come on this far side. Maybe a nice line down there. I'm going to talk a little bit about perhaps this side having a stronger shadow. This is the fun kind of shadow work. <laughs> That's just lovely. And so that creates a bit of a, a value scape, doesn't it? Adding some pure red. And I do like a little bit of that white and red, so I don't want that to go away. But maybe just a little more. Kind of thought there. Because pears do get those blushings, don't they? They do a little bit. So you can put a little bit of that there. Okay, so we're going to dry everything and then I'm going to show you what you're going to do next. So in this step, I want to add some unexpected interest. I've really dried everything. I am going to get down into a very small brush. Um, you just want a brush that you have a lot of control over because we're going to make a bit of a check here and we're going to do a little bit of patterning here and then we may do some line work out here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. This is a quarter inch angle. You could just use a small bright. If I had a bright this small on, on, on hand right now, I would do this. And I'm going to come here and make a square. Just making these little white squares. Can you see that? Coming along again, little white squares. All along that sort of little curve, right? And it's it's accentuating that. Space a bit, I think. I like that very, 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 very much. And that pattern's interesting. I can come in with a little bit of black. Doesn't actually have to be in a pure check. Oh, yeah. So you can leave some of the background color there. 
you don't even need every square to be like pure opaque white All right, you're just trying to create a visual interest. You do want balance, and so that'll be the thing, you know, to look for is like, does that feel balanced? You know, how do I, how do I work that out? I might have to come out a little bit like that to kind of diffuse that check. You can see what we're doing there. It's a little, little bit interesting, isn't it? A little bit unexpected. I'm going to go ahead and tip a little bit of white here. And I'm going to just a little bit on the stem. Not everything, just a little bit. And come here and get a little bit of my black. Work out the outside of that leaf. That is really fantastic. I like that. That's that is looking fantastically interesting to me. When we come back, I'm going to show you what you do next. So I'm going to do an interesting mark here. It's going to be an energetic mark. It's going to be a calligraphy. I'm going to take my uh, half inch angle, right? And I'm going to load it, edge load it with pure white. I'm going to come across here and I'm going to go down and make a very interesting, I might even go over the pair a little bit. Kind of adding some energy to that. You know, I feel like some of this didn't mark heavily enough, so you can come back if you need to, if you absolutely need to, to improve a mark. A little bit heavier in here. Just little dashes. Sometimes that's helpful to put in. I may come back with my wet brush and kind of in a strange way erase. You can erase sometimes acrylic paint if it hasn't set. If it has set, then you just come back, you know, with these two colors. Because if you um, do this, what it does is it puts this mark weirdly behind the leaf. And I think that that would be fun to push it behind that leaf. See how I did there? And now it's, it's kind of like a mark behind. Yeah. I'm going to dry everything and then I'm going to add a little touch of something. So this is almost where I want it to be, but it doesn't quite have enough uh, contrast between that background and the mark line. So I'm going to put out my fluid white paint just so I have a better one. And this will happen sometimes when you're doing knife work or brush work or anything where the mark doesn't quite come out how you envision. I'm going to take a number 10 Raphael Textura and I'm going to load it with this. And I'm going to come back my brush on the back handle so that I can strengthen that line somewhat in a few places. See what I mean? And by coming back, it lets me uh, not be too rigid and everything with, with what I have kind of going on. Finding my balance there. Sometimes we can use these types of marks to imply uh, a little bit more, I don't know what, what I think of it is. I'm going to come back with my angle here. We imply a world of like 
like even though this is a very stagnant subject right like it's a it's a it's a very still still life right it's still but by adding these marks and the checks and all of that we create the sense of motion and energy in the world I'm coming on a counterbalance here and you can see that's quite a powerful transition to make so there's this implied line within the check that's happening and by uh, opening it up in the way that I have and changing the side of the line that it sits on it absolutely does kind of flip that motion so let's dry that because I don't want to pick up any gray so I'm back with my quarter inch. You just want to pick either a small bright or small brush that will let you do checks. And I'm going to come back and kind of check this out with my black. An alternate choice I could have made was piano keys. Oh yeah, that could have been cool. Yeah. So these things, they're not just, you know, limited to uh, what we're doing here. You can think like, you can be like, oh no, you know what would be nice is musical notes. Add some white here now. And I like where those touch each other a little bit. And then kind of come back in and balance that up, balance that out, which I do very, very much like. Came back with a little bit of red. Break that up a bit and add a little of that patterning out that way. Maybe not right there as much. So that's just me just playing with that. That idea of that and how that breaks out. And I think I like that very much. So I'm going to say that again, because I could go and go and go and go. And then where we stop, nobody knows. <laughs> yeah. And that's always the danger, right? Is like just the continuing past the point and so sometimes it's good when you're doing a lot of abstracts is to stop and rest and you know ask yourself important questions like is this enough um, do I have what I need um, and is there any place that bothers my eye bothers my sense of balance and self and if as long as you're good then you can go do what I'm doing which is give it a signature In this particular case, I'm signing a little bigger than I usually do because the signature is almost part of the composition. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. the white line and the white line, it kind of pulls together. Oh, that's really fun. So for those of you that did Big Art Quest years and years ago, in 20, was it 2016? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> that was fun. Pair of pairs. The pair of pairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh you guys have no idea what you did too because y'all made pairs trend that oh, like one that photograph crazy. became viral and um artists everywhere even in my own league were painting pairs because they saw that pairs were big online they're like why are pairs so big why is everyone painting pairs y'all <laughs> it's just our art class it was so funny so hopefully that tickled your guys's, you know, emotional space on that. Hopefully you enjoyed this. This is one of those paintings. You just, you can take this all the way to the end and get all the sense out of it. You can stop when it's just kind of expressionist. You can, you can change the colors up once you have the techniques and match it to your home. It's one that looks good uh, big. You could add a pair, another pair. <laughs> if you like it. That, that's true across there's just you once have you have it pairs. there's just no 
there's no end to what you can do. And I think that that's what's uh, sometimes really fun about abstract is the freedom it gives us to look beyond our subject. Now, don't forget, if you check the description down below, there are links to things you should check out. I like to hide them there. There is the website, theartsherpa.com. Um, and at on it is a store where you can buy some things you saw today. You don't have to. I'm just saying they're there if you want to. And then um, also you can find on our website uh, the books. Um, so if you're like not only this book but previous year's books as we've we've just learned. So <laughs> so many acrylic April books for snow books and then too many books. And uh, so that's going to be really fun for all of us. You know, and that resource may help you. Like if this is a hard concept and, and stuff, sometimes those extra things, those extra uh, prompts and text, that extra information and text, the steps broken down that way, they can make a big difference. If the internet is chaotic for you and you want to do these very sequential and you want to have it be really academic, there's also a school option this year, which is really cool and fun and super cool you don't have to do that it's all free hair on youtube but sometimes search is a pain and so you know it's hard to find the playlist again or what i get it and not we're not all technologically friendly sometimes i don't feel technology is friendly at all and um and then of course don't forget there's an acrylic april group and they will be there to support you and encourage you and everyone will be going through it with you so they'll know how you feel all the people that go through we have about about 10,000 people and up that do it a year. So that's a lot of encouragement. Yeah. And then also remember, you know, I want to say this. Uh, I should have said it a lot more during this daily painting. But remember, my daily painting, but your life may not match. And it's okay to have life come up and make you take a break. Not a big deal. It happens, right? So like daily painting as best as you can. All right, guys, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.